Hi everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures over the last year, you'll typically find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we've traveled through various countries, we've noticed a few things that are a little bit different to what we're accustomed to back home in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this channel is to share our experiences as we travel around the world in the hopes of encouraging you to do the same. In order to help you with that though, we want to share some tips and tricks for each of the places that we have visited so that should the time come and you're planning out an itinerary to go to the same places, you're armed to the teeth with useful information that will help you. Today's video is going to focus on traveling through Ecuador, specifically the Galapagos Islands. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that we went to the islands of Santa Cruz, Isabella, and San Cristobal during our time there. While a few of the pointers are going to be specific to those individual places, many of them will be more general about enjoying the area as a whole. We hope that you find these useful. As you are planning your itinerary to come to the Galapagos, then one of the things that you will notice first thing when trying to book flights is that there is no such thing as a direct connection to get there. That's because the island airports are not large enough to support international flights, so therefore you will have to do a layover in either of the two large mainland airports in Ecuador, either Guayaquil or Quito, before you then head over to the islands. Because of the timings of these flights though, then it is quite likely that you're going to have to do an overnight stay in whichever city you're transiting through. So just be sure to factor in a night stay, both going into the Galapagos and coming back out of the Galapagos as part of your itinerary. Before you fly to the Galapagos, make sure that you have purchased your landing card. The landing card should be available for purchase at check-in on the mainland. However, if you're like us and somehow miss this, then it is possible to purchase your landing card upon arrival in the Galapagos and it costs 20 US dollars per person. Another cost consideration upon arrival in the Galapagos is that the entirety of the Galapagos is a national park. So with that, you will have to pay a park entry fee in order to experience the islands. That will be an additional 100 US dollars per person, which you will be able to pay once you land. The reason that we're mentioning everything in dollars is because Ecuador's only currency is the US dollar, so just bear that in mind. In the Galapagos, there are two municipal airports that are available to you, San Cristobal and Baltra Island. Baltra Island is the more popular one though, so this will probably be the more likely one that you're going to encounter, so we're going to provide this to you. Once you have landed in Baltra Island, then there are a number of steps that you're going to have to go through in order to get to accommodation on Santa Cruz. While Baltra Island is one of the more popular airports to come into because it's better served, unfortunately you can't stay on Baltra Island. You have to go into the nearby island of Santa Cruz. In order to get there, to either stay in Santa Cruz or to get a ferry to move on to either of the other inhabitable islands, then you're going to need to jump through a few hoops. Upon arrival, then you will need to get a bus to take you down to the water taxi terminal and that will be five USD per person. Next there will be a water taxi. The water taxi will cost one dollar per person and then on the other side then you have a couple of options. You can either get a taxi which will be 25 USD in order to take you to the main town of Puerto Ayora, or you can get a bus which will take you to the bus terminal which is just a little bit outside of Puerto Ayora, which is 5 USD per person. Do bear in mind though the bus terminal is a little bit outside. I think we found it to be maybe about 15 to 20 minute walk, but we chose to walk over getting a taxi because we had heard that the taxis around Puerto Ayora did charge some exorbitant rates. Just something to be mindful of there. In order to pay for what you need to, then there are ticket kiosks for each of the bus routes that you want to take. So you will need to prepay in order to get on these. For the water taxis though, 
All you need to do is board and then you pay your $1 per person as you transit through. Another thing to bear in mind is that card is not going to be available for these, so you will need to make sure that you have cash on you for each of these transfers to get you to Plato Island. The towns on each of the three habitable islands are very walkable. We sometimes stayed a little bit out of town and the maximum walk to get anywhere was probably about 20 minutes. So just keep that in mind when you're planning your day. You probably can do it all walking. You could rent a bike because that is an option to do on the islands, but just bear in mind that you're really not gonna have to pay for much transportation on the islands themselves. Even though there are definitely taxis driving around, you probably won't need them. As mentioned before, while there are 21 islands that make up the Galapagos, only three of those are ones that you can stay on, and those are Santa Cruz, Isabella, and San Cristobal. Irrespective of which islands you land into, there are ferries that do run between each of these three islands that run twice daily. Typically, there is one relatively early in the morning, either at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., and then there is an afternoon one at about 3 p.m. However, it is worth noting that while you can get ferries that run between Santa Cruz and Isabella and Santa Cruz and San Cristobal, there is no service that runs between Isabella and San Cristobal. So you do have to go through Santa Cruz to get onto that island, if that is the itinerary that you plan on doing. Each of the ferries that you end up taking will be 30 US dollars per person per ferry. So just bear that in mind. If you do want to go from Isabella all the way through to San Cristobal, then it will be 60 US dollars per person because you will be having to take two separate ferries. And also because of the timings of the ferries, then it's likely that you're going to spend an entire day getting from Isabella through to San Cristobal and you will have some time to kill in Santa Cruz. In order to get your ferry tickets, it is worth bearing in mind that there are only a limited number of boats that go, so you will want to be booking in advance. While you can do this online, it is actually far cheaper to do this at a travel agency in person on the island that you are based. What we ended up finding was that it was 30 US dollars per person in person, but if you try to book it online, it would be more like 40 US dollars per person per ferry. So therefore, it is a significant saving and definitely more worth your while to make sure that you're going into a travel agency to book your ferry spots. It is also worth noting that these ferry prices when you are booking in person are a complete flat rate. There is no fluctuation between any travel agencies. Irrespective of the travel agency that you go through, you will be getting exactly the same deal for each ferry. When you have booked a ferry, then typically you would expect in most other countries that that would be everything taken care of in terms of the cost. However, the Galapagos runs a little bit differently. Because of the laws there, then the boats have to be moored away from the shore. There is no distinctive marinas in the same way. And so therefore, the only way to get to the boats that you are going to need to get on is via water taxi. If you're on a tour, then typically these water taxi fares are taken care of for you, so you never have to deal with that cost yourself. However, if you're planning on doing your own thing and, for example, taking ferries between islands, then it is worth noting that every single time you take a ferry, you will need to take a water taxi to the boat and back from the boat. And for each of those water taxis, that will incur a $1 per person charge. That is not negotiable. That is not something that you can just waylay. You will have to pay that because that is just the expectation of how things work. Equally, if you are planning on going through Santa Cruz for pretty much anything, then you will have to pay a $1 landing fee every time you come in to that island off of any ferry. So just bear all of this in mind so that you make sure that you're not caught out and you do have the extra cash to be able to pay for these fares. 
As Nick mentioned, booking a ferry online costs more than booking a ferry in person with a travel operator, and the same goes for tours. Online tours are significantly more expensive. We ended up saving 50 US dollars per person by booking our 360 tour in San Cristobal in person at a tour operator versus online. It's also worth noting that if you pay in cash for the tours and the ferry tickets, then you're likely gonna save on the service charge or credit card fee that these tour operators may charge you if you decide to book with a credit card instead. So having cash available in pretty significant amounts to book tours and ferries is really worthwhile. By now, you've probably heard us mention cash quite a lot, and that might worry you to be carrying a huge bundle of cash at once. But we are here to tell you, do not fear, because there are ATMs that exist on these islands. However, it is worth noting that ATMs are only on two of the three habitable islands. There are zero working ATMs on Isabella, so the only places where you can get cash out will be Santa Cruz and San Cristobal. Therefore, you will need to plan ahead to make sure that you have sufficient amounts of cash for everything that you're planning on doing while you're in Santa Cruz and San Cristobal. If you're planning on going to Isabella, then you have more than enough cash for your stay there. While groceries can be paid for by cards at the supermarkets, other things like cafes and local restaurants should be settled in cash. In terms of grocery stores, there's one fantastic one on Santa Cruz called Pro Insular Market and you can pretty much get all of your groceries there, even toiletries, and you won't really need to go anywhere else. There's also some really fantastic ones on San Cristobal. I don't think we really found any on Isabella. It was more like mini markets, and we went to the bakery a lot, but certainly on San Cristobal and Santa Cruz, which are more built up, then there are plenty of grocery stores, and again, you can pay for groceries on card. One thing that we discovered very quickly about Ecuador as a whole is that the water is in no way potable. Even the locals will not drink it. Thankfully, because everybody knows that, then water is definitely available to buy pretty cheaply in large quantities, so you're not going to be at any kind of disadvantage. And equally, whether you're at a cafe or a restaurant, and more often than not, there will be water refilling stations available, and they may also offer that in your accommodation. If you don't want to be at any kind of disadvantage when it comes to this kind of thing, though, then we do recommend bringing a reusable water bottle, even better if you have one that has a UV filter in it, before you come to Ecuador to make everything as comfortable as possible. Similar to in Costa Rica, not many people speak English here, so just make sure that you're armed with some basic Spanish words about daily life to help get you around and make your time a little bit easier. One of the things that we always find important and we absolutely love talking about is food. And we are here to say that as you go around the Galapagos, there are definitely some very good food and coffee options available to you outside of supermarkets. However, one of the things that you are going to find is, especially in the more touristy areas, then a number of the prices are going to be a little bit off-putting and sound far too good to be true, and we are here to tell you that is the case. The fact is, for each of the more expensive looking eateries, there are a bunch of local ones that will provide you with a very hearty, absolutely delicious meal for next to no money. We found that while there are coffee shops available that maybe sell you a latte for $5, there are also bakeries that sell you a perfectly good barista-made Americano for $2. In the same way, there are breakfast and lunch deals at a number of local eateries that will provide you with a very hearty meal, providing you with a soup, a main, and juice, all for between four to six US dollars a head. Therefore, you can definitely enjoy the wonderful food that is on offer here, as long as you are happy to shop around a little. Wildlife is absolutely 
everywhere in the Galapagos. So don't panic. You are going to see it. You really would have to work hard to not trip across the wildlife in this area. Unlike in Costa Rica, where the dense rainforest makes spotting wildlife a little bit more tricky, here it is just so out in the open. Obviously, you're going to want to do tours here to see some of the wildlife, but honestly, you could see a ton of wildlife without doing a single tour. For example, in Santa Cruz, if you just walk down the main street in Puerto Ayora, it's called Charles Darwin Avenue, you will come across pelicans, turtles in the ferry port, sharks swimming around the ferry port, there are sea lions on benches, and just lying almost on the pavement, same with the marine iguanas, and you will be very, very close to it. However, you're still told to maintain a respectful distance, about two meters, although sometimes it's not possible to do that because the wildlife just wants to come to you because they're used to humans not being harmful to them. It should go without saying, though, that you should not touch the wildlife or feed them as this can actually be very harmful to them although it could be tempting because those sea lions are so cute and you really just want to boop their noses in other countries that we visited where we've seen sea lions we've been told that if you do get too close they could bite you and that could require urgent care here obviously we really were able to get up close and personal with them especially in the water but i think it's just worth noting that at the end of the day they are wild animals as comfortable as they are with humans so just be careful as you're going around the beautiful rugged landscape of isabella then one of the things that we were told to see was to go to the wall of tears however it is worth noting that this is a little bit outside of the main town so with that, it is worth definitely investing in a bike if you want to head down there because it is about six kilometers away from your accommodation. Bike rentals can be found in the town called Puerto Vila Mil and should not cost any more than about $10 per bike per day. Because of the fact that you are probably going to have to trudge through some sand, we would recommend trying to go for a fat tire bike if you can. But generally speaking, any bike will probably do the trick. Concha de Perla is a really great snorkeling spot on Isabella Island. It is free to go in, but of course you need to bring your own snorkeling gear. You must rent snorkeling gear in town in Puerto Villamil because there are no rental places close to Concha de Perla. And we paid $3 for a snorkel and mask for the entire day. We learned this one the hard way, so you don't have to. Buses back to Baltra Island Airport from Puerto Ayora only run until 9.30 in the morning. So if you want to save yourself some money, get on one of the early buses. Otherwise, you're going to have to take a taxi for 25 US dollars. And that makes up our list for the Galapagos Islands. We had such a good time exploring this absolutely magical place and if you are planning on going and exploring these islands which we really really can't stress enough that you should do once in a lifetime then we hope that you find our tips and tricks useful however we do completely understand that maybe we haven't covered everything so if you have any further questions or you have recommendations from your own experiences, then feel free to pop those in the comments below. That's us for now though, so until next time, take care. And keep smiling.